Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. And today we have a battle featuring a tank that we really don't see very often at all, the German Tier 7 medium tank, the Panther. This is Tanker 1200. He's in a Tier 7 battle here on the Pilsen map. And I think there's a very good reason why we don't really see the Panther very much. It's kind of crap. <laughs> and I don't mean in the trendy historical revisionist way Oh, actually, the German tanks weren't that good. And I'm not against historical revisionism just for the sake of it. I mean, I think thanks to historical revisionism, we finally managed to dispel the myth that the Sherman was a bad tank and it took five of them to knock out one Panther. But the German tanks weren't bad. And I am getting kind of tired of seeing all these clickbait videos on YouTube saying, well, actually, the German tanks were bad. They weren't. The Panther in particular had a way better gun better armour and comparable mobility to the T-34 and the Sherman. It definitely wasn't a war-winning tank though. I mean, obviously, Germany lost the war. But it wasn't a war-winning tank in the way that the Sherman and the T-34 were, because the Sherman and the T-34 were cheap to manufacture, reliable, good enough, and were produced in the tens of thousands. Not something that you could say about the Panther, or the Tiger, or the King Tiger. Because while pound for pound, the Panther was a better tank than the Sherman or the T-34. It was hideously expensive, monstrously over-engineered, not particularly reliable, particularly the transmission, and Germany could only produce one of them for every 10 Shermans and T-34s that the Allies churned out. So, mm, yeah. But taken on its own merits, it was not a bad tank. It was a pretty good tank. You know, as long as the driver didn't gun the engine too hard for too long and burnt the transmission out, but yeah. Fortunately, here in World of Tanks, they don't model tank reliability. Can you imagine if they did? Just stop and think for a second about just how popular the Chieftain would be if tank reliability was modelled in this game, and 30% of the time when you enter the battle in the Chieftain, the engine wouldn't start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, despite the fact that vehicle reliability is not modelled in World of Tanks, so the Panther at least doesn't have that against it, I'm still going to go ahead and say that, in World of Tanks at least, the Panther is pretty bad. You see, if this thing was matched up against the kind of tanks that it actually fought, Shermans and T-34s, this would be amazing. But it isn't, is it? Those are Tier 5 and the Panther's Tier 7, and it's just as likely to be fighting E-50s and T-54s as it is Shermans and T-34s. And that's kind of just the start of the Panther's problems, because while in reality it had an amazingly good 75mm gun, and even in-game the L-70 is still a very, very good gun. If you're shooting at Shermans and T-34s. Tier 7, however, not so much, which is where this monstrosity, the 75mm L-100, comes from. It does have way better penetration, 198mm and it is extremely high velocity thanks to the long barrel. But the aiming time is absolutely horrible and it still only does 135 average damage per shot. It's just not good enough. Ooh, KD2. Oh, engine fire. Yay! <laughs> Too cheap to pack a fire extinguisher. The thing is though, what are you going to do? Because I mean, if, if the Panther was tier 5, the same tier as the tanks it was supposed to fight, and beat, um, it would basically be overpowered. We've oh, caught the T-43 anyway. Getting in close where the T-43 can't actually get the gun down low enough in order to hit his lower glacis, which is the only realistic place a T-43 can expect to beat a panther from the front. But I think the panther's problems could all be solved if it was a tier 6 rather than a tier 7 medium. Oh, now the T-29 with its 105mm gun could be a problem, but... Uh, Oh, oh, hung up on the rocks. No, that's all right. He's good. <laughs> that could have been embarrassing. But they're never going to make the Panther a tier 6 tank. And they're never going to make the Panther a tier 6 tank because they kind of addressed that by introducing the VK-3002M, which is basically a mostly historically accurate Panther at tier 6, where this tank always should have been, with other contemporaries like the T-3485. Unfortunately, the existence of the VK-3002M means that the actual Panther is pretty much stuck at Tier 7, and it's just going to have to learn to like it, which is kind of why the Panther is a bad tank in World of Tanks, because it's a Tier 6 medium stuck at Tier 7 with a made-up gun, this L100, 
in an attempt to slap a band-aid on the fact that it is a tier 6 tank stuck at tier 7. And this gun, I mean it, it addresses the subpar 150mm penetration of the actual L70 75mm gun that the tank was fitted with uh, by boosting the penetration up to 198 And it is very accurate, I'll give it that. But 135 average damage per shot at tier 7. I mean, you can make that work. You look at the British 6 pounder and 75mm guns. I mean, the same damage output, but a 1.9 second aiming time. That's what you need to make this kind of gun work. Because with the 2.3 second aiming time, and the, well, what for its tier is, well, kind of below average armour. Although it does still have good mobility. But that combination of factors means that the Panther with this gun, the L100, in World of Tanks, I mean, oops, <laughs> who put that there? <laughs> but the Panther in World of Tanks with this L100 gun is kind of supposed to be played as a, well, as a sniper. But then you may as well be playing a tank destroyer. In fact, I would rather be playing the Stug in a tier 7 game than the Panther, because then you could get away with hiding in a bush and sniping at people. As a top tier medium, you're kind of expected to brawl, and this tank is just not built for that. And yet that's more or less exactly the way that Tanker 1200 has been playing it, because he doesn't have an awful lot of choice. He is a top tier medium. And the team need him. Oh, speaking of Panther tank destroyers, the Yag Panther. Come on, poke forward. You know you want to. Oh, you've got to be kidding. He's got a quick reload though. Yeah, he's got it. All right, cool, good. Oh, well, that's the top gun. It's kill number six. Four in his way. Team have finally gone a couple of kills ahead. We, oh, spoke too soon. <laughs> okay, there's still one kill ahead. KB85 and Cromwell down there, which means those guys, one of whom is on very, very low health, probably facing the Cromwell B and the T50 2. So he's positioning himself up here where he can actually snipe, which is what this tank is good at. KB85 and Cromwell will still be able to respond to any pressure on the two teammates behind him. And there's the Cromwell. Cromwell's a fast tank though. It's not a particularly large target. That'll be backing off there so he doesn't have to fight the KV-85 at the same time. Although he hasn't managed to land any hits on the Cromwell. Artillery's just sitting there of course, because that's what artillery does. And no attention to the world around him, just focused on that top-down artillery view. Oh, this aiming time is atrocious. Yeah, and there's the ram, he's going to follow it up with a kill. He's just not, I mean, he's only got the, doesn't have a very large target to shoot at, and the range is bad, but actually scoring hits now. Unfortunately, the Cromwell's going to get away. And let's not forget, there's still a KV-85 out there as well. Where did he go? Well, on the bright side, nobody's going to be rushing the base anytime soon, not with him covering it from here. What happened to the T-50-2 and the Cromwell B? Because they've been suspiciously quiet. What are they up to? You'd have thought they'd have gone for the AMD and the SU-152 or everyone was preoccupied with this side of the map, but uh, they wasted their opportunity. The KV-85 has been respotted by the P-43. The tank is sitting there waiting to try to respot and kill the Cromwell. Yeah, Cromwell could still be there. I mean, he didn't get spotted. The thing is, there's... There's bushes up there on that hill where the Cromwell was last seen. And if Tanker does get respotted, the Cromwell, who is firing gold, because of course he is, would be able to snipe him unspotted from that location. Tanker doesn't have a huge amount of health left. KB-85 has been respotted. Oh, and there's the Cromwell B. Okay. So that's the Cromwell B, which means the other Cromwell might still be up on that ridge. Although Tanker has not been spotted. But the P-43 needs help. So it's no use sitting here playing a game of what ifs. There are definitely enemies over here who need dealing with. Distracted by the P-43, so Tanker gets the first shot off, although the Cromwell B is going to get a return shot before 
attack it can finish him off and that I believe is the last round of non-gold ammo that's going to be fired <laughs> at, at Tanker for the duration of the rest of this match and sure enough there's the other Cromwell who did not use the bushes correctly and did reveal his position by shooting and <laughs> a blind kill just because he can't see you doesn't mean you can't get your head blown off if you stick it up out of cover that's eight kills two enemies left T50-2 and the KV-85. The KV-85 kind of has its own problem. And a T50-2 would normally kind of have to work its way around a flank, which it is eminently capable of doing in order to make its 57mm gun effective. But, well, that guy's just spamming gold at everything, so we can actually take these guys on from the front. Although it's not difficult to penetrate the armour of an AMD. But it's also not difficult for that thing to penetrate the armour of the Panther from the front when it's loaded the gold as you can quite clearly see. And it has an even faster rate of fire, although it does less damage per shot, than Tanker 1200's long 75. So this is by no means a guaranteed kill. I mean, this could actually go either way. It's going to take two shots to kill him. Or two shots and he's trying to get around you. He's trying to get around you. Oh, hung on the rocks. <laughs> Happens to the best of us. That just leaves the KV-85. The team have finished it off. Unfortunately, no pools medal. Ten kills denied. But he was close. He almost got it. If that first shot at the T-50-2 had actually landed and done damage, he might have had time to get the killing shot on the KV-85. And that would have been a pools medal match. But, well, you know, would have, could have, should have, didn't. Still, nine kills is nothing to be ashamed of. Ace tanker... Rally Walter's steel wall. <laughs> I didn't see that one coming with all the gold penetrations he sustained. But there it is, steel wall, high calibre, and of course Top Gun. Anyway, congratulations, Tanker 1200. And the Panther, a kind of bad tank in the game, if not actually in real life. Aside from those reliability issues. And the hideous over-engineering. And the cost. <laughs> and... The difficulty of... Ma okay, yeah, fair enough. Maybe, maybe the historical revisionists do actually have a point. But anyway, well done, despite all of that. And I hope you enjoyed watching it, because that's it for today. As always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.